Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We are continuing our foray into the realm of serendipity. And as far as I know, this is the last of the books that have to do with small winged flying horses. At the very least, it is the last of my personal collection regarding small winged flying horses. I don't think there are any others in the series. The main difference on this one is Stephen Cosgrove is not involved. Butterwings is written and illustrated by Robin James. Hmm. Front cover listing. Laughing at yourself can be the most fun of all. Yeah, if that's Butterwings on the cover, it reminds me a lot of Glitterby. Hmm. Dedicated to Autumn Rowe, whose friendship and love of horses helped this story come to be. Robin. Beyond the highest mountains, where the soft red blush of spring spreads across the sloping hills, there is a beautiful place called Wingsong. It is a magical place, for it is where all the tiny winged horses are born. One of these magical little horses was a bright golden palomino called Glitterby. She had a thick snowy white mane and tail that snapped in the wind as she frolicked about the meadow. She was a very happy horse because she was with Foal and soon to become a mother. Ah! Oh, well, sorry about her. We're in Wing Song, so mother and child should both be fine. One morning, Glitterby awoke with a strange, quivering feeling, and she realized that the day had arrived for her new baby to enter the world. She told the other mares as she headed off to the forest. They smiled with joy and anticipation knowing that she would be returning soon with a tiny one by her side. Later that evening, as the moonlight began to glimmer on the swaying grasses of the valley, the grazing mares snapped to attention. There was Glitterby, emerging from the forest, with the tall grass mysteriously moving a few feet behind her. I can see you. Mm, looks pretty cute. That it does. As Glitterby slowly approached, the beautiful evening light unveiled her new baby, a tiny version of herself with golden wings and a velvety pink muzzle. What's her name? One of the mares asked. Glitterby giggled and said, You know that clumsy little butterfly everyone calls Butterfingers? Right after my baby was born, he landed on her back. There he sat, resting his chin in his hands, admiring her until he fell asleep and slid off with a plop on the ground. I thought it was so cute that I named her Butterwings. With love in their hearts, all the mares of Wingsong gathered around the new mother and baby as they nestled down for the night. As morning broke, Glitterby gently woke her tiny baby and helped her to her feet. Delighted with life, Butterwings playfully tossed her head and tried out her wobbly new legs. She hopped up and down with glee and wheeled and reared, playing with Butterfingers and all the other butterflies of the meadow as they danced around her. Her tiny whinny could be heard, talking about such important things as sunshine, buttercups, and the colors of the meadow. Very nice rendering. Mm -hmm. Definitely has some similarities to the other, office, the other artists, but it's slightly more cartoony in style. Same artist, Same different one. author. Oh. Written and illustrated by Robin James. The other books were written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin. Ah, that explains a lot. This one is also much later. I believe it wasn't published until 93. Hmm. Can't believe I was still getting these at that age. Day after day, Butterwing slowly ventured farther and farther away from her mother, just wanting to explore watch and listen to every new experience of life. One day, as she was playing with the butterflies, one landed gently on her back and began to laugh hysterically. She turned her head around to see what was so funny and noticed he was pointing at her tail. What's so funny? Butterwings asked, but the butterfly couldn't stop laughing long enough to answer. Hmm. How do you tell from that angle? Also, that butterfly kind of has a plump face. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Well, Butterwings couldn't see anything funny and was getting a little miffed at this butterfly's rudeness. 
so she shook him off with a flick of her hind leg. A few moments later, she heard several tiny voices laughing behind her. Hovering over her was a group of butterflies giggling their heads off. She looked again, and this time strained her neck as far as she could. To her shock and dismay, she finally saw what all the fuss was about. There, on her rump and all around her tail, were at least a dozen big, round, and very hard to miss purple spots that were not at all visible on the previous page from the side shot, but quite visible on this page. Ah. So from that side view, you can see them. From this three-quarter view, you can't. Hmm. Were they in the other shots where we saw her backside, though? Yeah, I don't see anything in that shot. Well, this was a night shot and very poorly lit. So the first daylight shot we get of her, we see the dapples. Then the next page where the butterfly is laughing, we don't. And then when she looks over her shoulder and sees them herself, obviously we get to see them. Because mm -hmm. her tail is taking up a good third of the frame. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Butterwings thought to herself. How could this be? She stared in amazement. I must find a way to get rid of these horrible purple spots. How did this happen? Suddenly her wonderful, carefree joy gave way to serious determination. She just had to find a way to rid herself of those awful spots. Butterwings raced to the river and waded in over her back. This will do it, she said, letting the water run over her. When she felt she had soaked long enough to wash off the spots, she jumped out of the river onto the bank. With a huge spray of water drops, she shook herself dry. I don't think that's gonna work. No. Also, to me, it seems like the perspective on her muzzle's a bit off there. Hmm. I usually do not have complaints about this author's proportions. It looks okay to me. But I do notice there's some lightness on that and the forehead patch. <laughs> the image is kind of funny. Slowly, she turned to look. Those silly purple things were still there. I know, she thought. I'll lie in the sun and bleach them out. Convinced that her new plan would work, Butterwings chose a nice spot in the grass, and with a confident smile, she lay down for a nap. The purple spots were facing right into the afternoon sun. A few hours later, Butterwings awoke, got to her feet with a yawn and a stretch, and looked behind her. Oh no, she said loudly. The spots were still there. Now what am I going to do? I'm never going to get rid of these terrible things. Are we going to see the mother again? Probably. Butterwings walked over to the nearest big tree with scratchy bark and tried rubbing those darn spots off. She would have been there all night if she hadn't been summoned by her mother and the other mares. They gathered around her and all started speaking at once. Oh, Butterwings, hurry, there's something you must see. The other horses were so insistent that she forgot about her spots and curiously followed them to the edge of the meadow. Butterwings eagerly hurried to the front of the group. As Butterwings stepped forward and looked down, she saw the most beautiful sight she had ever seen. It was a tiny, glistening black filly. She had four white socks, a white blaze, and, wait, something else. There, on her rump and all around her tail, were at least a dozen big, round, and very hard-to-miss purple spots. Interesting. Butterwings couldn't believe it. The curious thing was that no one seemed to notice, and no one was laughing. Butterwings was absolutely baffled. Don't you see those? She was accidentally bumped out of the way by everyone trying to see. You mean you don't mind those? Those what? Her mother asked as she nuzzled her close. You know, the, those, those things on her back. They're, they're just like mine. The ones that the butterflies were all laughing at. Glitterby smiled and said, Butterwings? You're getting as silly as the butterflies. She does kind of look like a cow there. She does look very calf-like there, very much like poppy seed. Her mother looks gorgeous. Yes, very well done. Though I don't remember Glitterby having the pink wings, because if you look at the angle, I don't think those should be butter wings. Yeah, I think they're probably the mother's. And she did see something about the wings, and I think we saw a shot. Yeah, see? They're the same color right there. Yeah, they don't mention the color of her wings in the text, only the mane and tail. 
that's where I was getting white. All right, so Butterwings is being as silly as the butterflies. Suddenly, Butterwings heard the familiar sound of laughter from several tiny voices. She looked down at the new filly. Hovering over her was a group of butterflies giggling their heads off. But from where she was standing, she could see something else, too. The butterflies looked as though they were pointing right at the filly's tail. But on the ground, she saw what they were really laughing at. The funny little clumsy butterfly had fallen down again and was laughing at himself the hardest of all. Butterwings looked up at her mother and realized how silly she was to think that the butterflies had been laughing at her. From that day forward, Butterwings proudly pranced in the meadows of Wingsong, growing every day and secretly showing off her beautiful purple spots. She realized that every baby born in the land, with spots or no spots, was loved just as they are. Interesting. When it seems that someone is laughing right at you, it might be a joke that you could laugh at too. Yeah, and then you get those kids who just laugh at other kids because they're me. Yes, but we're in wing song. People are mostly nice. Yep. And remember all those nice bugs that help flutter by? Mm-hmm. So. What do you think? It's a cute story. Yes, it's quite cute. And it's nice that there seems to be at least a vague connection between each of the entries. Flutterby, Flutterby, Fly, Glitterby, Baby, and Butterwings. Because Glitterby and Glitterby, Baby is definitely Palomino coloring, though she has white wings in that book. And these ones are more salmon colored. Actually, what color do they say Butterwings are? Because they have the same color. I thought it was different in the text. The text says with golden wings. I would not really call that gold. I'd call it more salmon. Yeah, it does have that tone to it. Which is interesting because usually the text in the pictures match quite well. Especially since the artist and the writer are the same in this one. Yes, you would expect that they would match even more closely. So it's interesting that this time has more deviation between the description and what's written and the actual illustrations. I'm going to have to pay more attention now, see if any of my other books are only done by Robin James or if this is the only one in my collection that wasn't wholly collaborative. I mean, it still has most of the hallmarks of serendipity books, the moral lesson, the couplet at the end. So stylistically, it's still very much like that. But this story seems to be a bit more lighthearted than the other ones in the Flutterby series, though it would be hard to get darker than Glitterby Baby. The Flutterby Fly with the, all the talk of dying in the rumors that were circulated. But those were just rumors. If we believe the old gray mare, Flutterby was actually going to die. So this was a much happier birth, though no stallions. Hmm. It's kind of like 80s version ponies. They're baby ponies, but there are usually no stallions around. Hmm. And they have mothers. Yet none of the Big Brother ponies seem to be the fathers. Though with winged horses purely of magic, maybe the children are born of magic. And maybe that's part of the problem with Glitter by Baby, was the mating of mortal and magic. I know it's a children's book, but I still would have liked that to have been explained. Very much so. Also, it's interesting that both Glitter by and Butterwings were foaled in a very real world traditional manner but Flutterby herself in the first book burst from a cocoon. Yeah. Like I said I think these are only loosely connected and this has been Butterwings written and illustrated by Robin James. Thank you for listening. Check out other Ember's Reading Room videos. There's enough now that we have playlists. Also check out some other videos on the Lux Analysis channel. Subscribe, like, comment, share. If you'd like to help support this page financially, you can go pick out something for yourself using the Amazon or Ebates links. Don't feel like shopping? You can toss a few dollars our way through Patreon or Coffee. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.